Hello, hi. So we will talk about which programming languages are used in uh, quantitative research. Somebody asked me this question that uh, he is quite interested in mathematics, but not quite uh, interested in coding. Now coding is quite important in quantitative research. Actually, you will definitely have to write uh, programming uh, languages. You have to use programming languages. However, the programming used in quantitative research is quite different from that in software development. The programming uh, used in quantitative research is primarily mathematical programming or scientific computing, which is uh, primarily focused on uh, how to perform mathematical operations uh, using uh, yeah, any programming language, whether it's C++ or Python or R or MATLAB, right? Uh, you don't have to learn web development or backend development. Well, in some cases, you may have to learn some front-end and back-end development. But uh, in the core quantitative research uh, work, you do not have to be good in uh, software development as such. Nice to have skill, but it's not the, a prerequisite. As long as you are good in mathematics and you're comfortable with mathematical models and you know how to use mathematical models, in finance, uh, you do not have to be really good in coding. I mean, as as long as you are able to write some uh, functions or procedure to perform some you know mathematical activities, for example, you can write an optimization routine uh, for a, a nonlinear optimization, or you are able to write uh, a script for Monte Carlo simulation, or you want to perform uh, the. Uh, you are able to write code for uh, statistical model development, then that should be fine. And then uh, one other important thing to know is about uh, how to handle data because you will be handling massive amount of data. So knowledge of SQL, knowledge of uh, some libraries or Python or uh, any other programming languages which are used for uh, data handling is, is actually quite useful. Uh, but it's not like you have to be a programmer uh much like in software development right that's not what is required okay uh, your mathematics knowledge is very very important actually and uh, programming is secondary right but some uh, quantitative jobs will need you to write a lot of uh, programs a lot of code and those are called quantitative uh, not quantitative researcher rather quantitative engineers uh, or quant developers so they are more programmers with some knowledge of quants or some knowledge of mathematics or quantity finance whereas if you want to work as a quantitative researcher you are more of a researcher more of a mathematician a quantitative finance expert with some knowledge of coding or programming right but don't get me wrong it could you know vary actually a lot in some companies you might have to be really good in programming but in many corporation programming is more of a secondary skills. Your, uh, I mean, what is expected from you is that you should be really good in mathematics and you should be able to read a research paper, understand yourself, and you should be able to reproduce the result by yourself, you know, using uh, any programming language, right? The most popular programming languages in quantity finance are C++, Python, uh, R, and uh, MATLAB, in some forms, people do use also SAS, but uh, C++ and Python, they're most uh, popular one. Python is quite heavily used nowadays, but for long C++ um, uh, has been in use, especially in uh, trading related activities. Uh, C++ is quite, quite uh, popular there. Whereas in, uh, in regulatory risk management, Python and SAS both are popular. In some companies, you may have to also use R programming. So good to learn uh, a general purpose programming language such as C++ or Python and a statistical programming such as SAS or MATLAB uh, or R. Right? If you know uh, a bit of uh, both, I think it will be good. But uh, regardless of uh, where you will work, you will definitely be using SQL. So it goes without saying that you really have to learn also quite a bit of uh, SQL. right? Um, and what are the things that you need to learn, right? Uh, it could be matrix programming, right? How to do vectorization, how to handle data, how to you know do basic stuff like inversion of matrix, how to write an optimization script, how to do uh, 
Monte Carlo simulation. Okay. Uh, how to uh, solve partial differential equations using MATLAB or using any sort of programming language. Um, knowledge of matrix programming, such as you know the one you have in uh, MATLAB, uh, is quite quite uh, useful there. Um, knowledge of object-oriented programming is also quite useful um, nowadays, basically. Um, other than that, I would say just practice uh, some mathematical programming. There are so many videos on YouTube. Uh, there are some also good website, for example, brilliant.org is a very good website on which you can practice some really good quantitative finance uh, programming questions, um, right? And, it, and as I said, it depends on uh, a lot on where you will be working in uh, trading firms, uh, Citadel or Jane Street in those firms. Um, it's important to have a fair bit of programming knowledge, whereas in banks, uh, you are more likely to, will be hired as a mathematician. There will be IT developers to write, uh, you know, software related code in uh, many small companies like fintechs and small banks. You may have to do even both, right? In hedge funds and in those places, you will also have to do both, right? Pro writing codes, but also doing research, right? Um, but in big hedge funds, you will have specialization. You are more of a specialist researcher, and there will be people who will be uh, writing code to implement the algorithm that you will be uh, you will be creating, right? Um, uh, and again, you may not be very interested in coding, uh, but you can still find opportunities in quantitative finance. It won't be too intimidating, let me tell you from experience. When I actually uh, started my career, I started in software engineering and uh, although I did like coding, but I didn't really like the software development part, the artistic part of software development, right? How to develop a front end, uh, you know, I think those things did not interest me at all. I was more interested in mathematics and I was also a bit, um, skeptical when I move to quant, uh, whether, uh, well, whether, whether I'll do well or not because, because of my lack of, uh, interest in coding, but I found out that, uh, coding is somewhat secondary in quantitative finance. And it, some people in quantitative finance, they're, uh, under this impression that they're really good coders, but they are actually not, um, they, many of them come from PhD and research background. They can write some codes, but they are not really great in coding actually. So they probably won't be uh, considered as good coders if they were they were in uh, software development, right? So software development level of coding is not needed. So that's the conclusion. So you, are, you don't have to worry about that. And you don't have to learn Java or uh, .NET or Ruby and Rails, uh, you know, these sort of programming languages. Uh, to work in quant. Uh, as long as you are familiar with the scientific computing part of Python or uh, C++, uh, you're good, right? And, and SQL. SQL is, is very easy to learn. So it goes without saying it. It's very important. But as long as you are familiar with the scientific part, only the mathematical computation using Python and, and, uh, and uh, C++, you're good, okay? And there are many uh, good material out there, but one really good uh, source is brilliant.org. You can visit their website. You can find many really good uh, programming questions, uh, quant based programming questions there. Right. If you have any questions, let me know also. I can also respond, respond to you. Thank you, guys.